Today, we are at New York University visiting Dr. Bud Mishra to talk about big data, innovation, and the future of biomedicine. Dr. Mishra is a faculty member at the Corrin Institute of Mathematical Sciences, and his research interests span a diverse range of topics, including bioinformatics, cancer research, robotics, and finance. He is a fellow at the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and he has also founded and advised numerous biotech companies. My career in genomics started with a technology called optical mapping, but then it moved on to more disease-oriented uh, problems, mostly in cancer, but also in systems biology, bioinformatics, a whole bunch of uh, topics related to biotechnology and healthcare. Big data is a phrase that's been used to mean many things, but in biology, they appear to refer to two kinds of things. One um, would be the set of data that are coming out from genomic sciences, genomics technology, and the other set are things that are coming out from electronic medical records. Even if I had 7 billion reference sequences, it still would be considered small in terms of statistics. Electronic medical records, similarly with large amount of longitudinal data, would be considered small. So it's more long data than big data. And that makes the statistical problems much more interesting than complex. The question is really about privacy, especially um, data related to your traits, your um, medical, biomedical uh, information, um, your behavior, things that are extremely personal and are connected to what one would call your inalienable rights. Imagine if I have your genome and in my basement I create a clone of you and then maybe using CRISPR, genetically engineer, and experiment on it, I would know what you would do and what you would think of long before even you would do. And that would create um, a social structure that would be impossible to sustain. We will be using CRISPR to do various kinds of editing. Um, clearly, there are thoughtful people involved and they will make sure that they understand what they're doing and make sure that the technology proceeds in a way that is useful. Uh, but I'm also worried that there should be much better experiments and assays to see what happens in off-target, uh, off-target binding, off-target cleaving, off-target editing. Even if it's very, very small probabilities that these things happen, many of these could be uh, dangerous not just for the science, but um, it, it can open up so many things that we haven't thought of. So there are three things that came to mind that I find fascinating about computer science. One is the establishment of DARPA after the Sputnik, and the structure that as misundirected research with portfolio of technologies, and each technology had limited amount of time to be created, but was aimed to be uh, everlasting. The second event that uh, gets me uh, thinking is the establishment of MCC, a consortium under Bobby Ray Inman, where many computer science companies uh, collaborated and decided to share technologies and intellectual properties that created a very different environment than what exists in biotechnology. The third one would be the VLSI revolution and its implementation through MOSIS where people were able to do abstraction and create hardware and computers and all sorts of things without ever understanding semiconductor physics. Um, can these things be replicated in biology or biotechnology? These are big challenges. But if it can, I think we'll see something similar to what we saw in computer science. There are many ways this can be structured, 
there are financial engineering techniques such as securitization and various forms of due diligence. All of these things could be very, very important. It may sound strange, this coming from a computer scientist. I think our obsession about data in not the fundamental biology is a mistake. Um, sequencing machines will come, there will be more next generation, next next generation. All of these will come, they will come up with their browser and their scripting languages. We should not be spending all our time uh, obsessing about those. We should go back and think about what is important to biology, what are the interesting hypotheses, and how to convincingly verify them. A very simple experiment that requires very little statistics or very large amount of data. Um, so that would be my advice to the young people because it's so natural to be enticed by big data and large fancy machines and big roomfuls of uh, uh, computers. Um, that's not where the elegance and the beauty are. As we move forward, technological advancement in sequencing sensors and data analytics is bound to revolutionize the field of biomedicine. Scientists like Dr. Mishra represent a rare breed of researchers who are working diligently at the intersection of technology and medicine to induce a paradigm shift in ways fundamental biomedical research is performed with technology as a driving force behind it.